Hi, Dave here, and today we're going to check out the work of Vlad Ganelli. Um, he's an illustrator, concept artist based in Romania, uh, Bucharest, Bucharest. Fuck. Um, I actually found this guy through one of his. Um, I I think I found him through Devent Art, and I was what kind of hooked me in to his work was his Predator sketches, and we'll be kind of going through the kind of batch of sketches that he did. Um, I think he was kind of inspired by the uh, the new Predator film, and um, yeah, I just I just like the way this guy paints, and he really kind of brings out the artistry in art, because um, in his portfolio, in his art station portfolio, he actually um, posts kind of like sketchbook shots, where they're not necessarily complete like like um, images, where the whole canvas is kind of filled. He posts a lot of his um, warm-up sketches, his explorations. And it's actually kind of nice to see that sense of ideation. And he posts more studies and actual concepts, which I do find fascinating. And it kind of shows the dedication that he has for his work. And I actually do recommend you follow him on his Instagram. I mean, everywhere, because he does have an art station, obviously, an Instagram and um, I think even a Gumroad, yeah, he does have like a few tutorials, I believe. Um, but yeah, he does post more frequently on Instagram. And uh, yeah. So in terms of his style, he's actually kind of, he's not that refined. I mean, he's pretty refined, but he's not like, uh, he doesn't do marketing art, he does concept art. And his illustrations, if ever he does like finish things, well, it's actually kind of hard if you go back to his art station. It's not like fully finished. It, it, it's a bit more artsy, I would say. Um, I mean, it can look finished from afar, but I think it's mostly about the idea. And I think his work is meant for more um, conceptualization. I mean, it doesn't have to be fully finished. Um, but I'm pretty sure if he wanted to, he could just kind of go into more detail and refine things. But I do like the way he paints. It's very... Not necessarily impressionistic, but it's just artsy, right? It almost it almost feels like a bit of a... It feels like pastel. Like soft pastel sometimes. Um, this is actually kind of a self-portrait. And he does like to simplify his brush set. He doesn't have like a lot of brush like... I keep saying like he doesn't have a lot of brush variety in his work he likes to keep it simple but look at the way he paints <laughs> it's a lot of back and forth strokes um it's almost as if again he's painting or sketching or drawing with pastels um it doesn't feel like a it doesn't feel like an oil painting it doesn't feel like a gouache it feels more like a um a pastel kind of thing or chalk Although he doesn't use the mixer brush a lot, he doesn't blend things um, with the smudge tool. Uh, he usually just likes to uh, do it stroke by stroke, kind of like a pencil, um, which is pretty interesting. And he likes to use this kind of squarish brush. Um, it's pretty common in his work. And it does have a bit of a, if you go back to it, it does have a bit of a, it's like a, uh, a what's the word? bristle it's kind of a bristle brush that's kind of set in a standard kind of position um and he actually doesn't do a lot, a lot of environments he mostly does characters and a lot of his studies actually involve creatures and characters i mean sometimes we'll do like mechs like sci-fi types of shit but uh more often than not he'll go back to like the human character the human figure and um creatures now this one's actually more of an illustration i mean it's not totally complete it actually kind of reminds me of like a Frank Frazetta kind of painting just because of the way it's done like the the perspective and the composition right but here you can still see that kind of stroke by stroke kind of approach that pencil like approach um, but again he doesn't do a lot of environments and he has a thing for lizards which is you know kind of his thing And when it comes to his brushwork, he does like to add a bit of jitter. And you can see this kind of back and forth kind of, well, jitter in his brush strokes. And it does actually look like pastel, right? Like a pastel kind of, uh, just try to search for soft pastel um, traditional sketches or paintings. 
and it will have the same kind of look. And it's also kind of impressionistic, I guess. Obviously, this part right here in the foreground, um, or this kind of stone rock is not really that important. Uh, the main focus is obviously on this chick, right? Now, it actually starts to look a bit like oil here, just because it looks kind of blended, but I think you could still see the uh, the stroke by stroke kind of approach here. I believe this is a study. Um, and again, he does like a lot of these. Um, sometimes he'll just leave it as line work. Sometimes he'll kind of go into a, the grayscale kind of approach. And sometimes he'll actually color um, his sketches or concepts. Sorry about that. Um, and again, he has like a lot of shots in his profile, especially in his Instagram, um, where he posts like... Um, Essentially, a snapshot of his sketchbook, of his digital sketchbook, and it looks pretty amazing. I mean, you can see like the amount of exploration that he does, or studies, and um, it really shows the dedication, which I really do find. Um, you know what? Actually, it's not just his, you know, his skill level that kind of uh, impresses me. It's the, um, it's the being an artist. Um, I think that's kind of what's making him a bit more attractive to me. Um, just because I can see like a lot of his sketchbook um, pages. And um, it does have a bit of a soft look, right? Even though it looks blended, it's kind of like a, again, like a pastel kind of way of blending. Um, but obviously it does it like stroke by stroke, right? And even his line work is pretty gestural and he does like a lot of gesture drawings of like people. So it does obviously transfer to his sketches whenever he does like creature designs and shit. So this is more of a head study. And again, more mini warm-up sketches, mind sketches. And look at how, look at how random they are. Um, fuck. I'm not sure if he uh, color picks the colors or he kind of just guesses it. Um, but I'm pretty sure he does have, he obviously does use reference. So, um, although I do notice he does lean more towards natural tones a lots of lots of browns in his work um right th now this one is more of a clearer kind of uh where it's not faded in the background i think this is actually how he sketches where it's a bit more darker right and it, it doesn't it, it's a great reminder for us to just not be so perfect when it comes to uh, our sketchbook sessions or our practice study sessions it's okay to be m kind of messy and because uh, it's not about being perfect it's about learning anyway so this one's based off of a crocodile obviously hu human anatomy does play a large role in concept art so if there's one thing you should learn it's human anatomy because it's so similar to like other um creatures anyway like the anatomy it's not going to be 100 percent but it's very transferable and even if you do like aliens and shit more often than not you will still try to find a way to add like humanoid types of forms just because it's it makes sense for us as humans right so it's kind of a good idea to just you know get a good grasp of the of the human anatomy right and again he has like a lot of sketches and um, I like how we kind of loosen, loosen things up when it comes to the edges or like the legs, the tail, even this whole like net thing um, or this pole to kind of catch fish, I'm assuming. Um, it's not super important because the concept is pretty much there. He did have to kind of go into detail a bit uh, in the face just to kind of... And you can see the kind of back and forth kind of stroke. Uh, it's kind of like a pencil like stroke. So it's not fully filled up. Like you can actually see the white space behind this um, sketch. Very, very concept arty and artistic. Some more creature studies here of this kind of um, alligator, crocodile. Uh, I forgot what this thing is called. It's kind of a crocodile, right? But um, it has like a long kind of mouth. So some texture studies here of the skin. So he obviously does use reference, and um, 
he has, again, a lot of these, and it's pretty impressive. I'm not sure how long his study sessions are, um, but I would assume he does this pretty much every day, just based off of the amount of um, shots that he posts online, especially in his kind of Instagram. I think he's um, pretty, pretty dedicated. Oh, by the way, he does have like um, like three. I found three interviews of this guy. I haven't watched them, but uh, they will be in the uh, description below. The links. Um, and they're pretty good, lengthy, you know, interviews, so... I mean, I still have to watch them, but, uh, yeah, just check them out. <laughs> this one's more of the, uh, some kind of gladiator, warrior kind of guy, and you can tell his human anatomy is pretty, um, realistic. And, um... Yeah. And again, it's, it's not, like, super rendered. You can still see a bit of that line work. He likes to leave that kind of line, especially in the contours. Um, kind of like an Art Nouveau type of approach. Um, think of the work of the comic artist Adam Hughes. He's also kind of heavily influenced by the Art Nouveau movement. And one common thing about that kind of thing is when it comes to 2D art, they like to add like bold, they, they like to bold in the edges of their characters or any kind of graphical element. And yes, it does make it look a bit flat, but if you render it right, especially within um, or whatever is inside the kind of bold line, it still works. Um, oh, I recommend the work of Input Woe as well. Input 2? Input? In, I, th I think Input Woe. Um, I did an art review of his work and he does the same, a similar kind of thing where he does kind of bold in the edges a bit. Um, so more, I'm not sure if this is based off of a film, but again, lots of studies here. Um, this could be from a keyframe, perhaps. And look at how quick they are. Um, not everything has to be colored, which is great. You know, it's more about... I think it was just trying to uh, repeat the same pose and make subtle variations. Kind of hard to say, but... Um, and then maybe once he was satisfied, he kind of went in and colored one. I love the way he does the folds, though. Um, and again, look at how gestural his sketches are. Or his line sketches. Reminds me a bit of Yankee, because Yankee sometimes posts his mm, line sketches and they do look very gestural. And you can tell that there's that solid grasp of um, draftsmanship, like solid drawing ability. Um, so I think a lot of his, not just Yankee, but obviously um, Vlad here, his painting is also kind of based on his drawing ability. Because even the way he paints, it's not... He kind of draws the paint in, you know, like stroke by stroke. So, like the only thing he does after drawing is just focus, I guess, on the values and colors. Um, but his approach is pretty much the same. Again, same um, squarish bristle brush that's used. Um, he has like a lot of these more heavy... He's very heavy on the figure drawing and painting studies um, aspect. Study of a thumb. I mean, look at how pretty they are. And I think the reason why he uh, likes the natural tones is because he's very heavy on the human's kind of anatomy or figure studies, so the skin aspect of it kind of transfers through all of his concepts, right? Unless, of course, you know, he's doing like reptiles or shit, or any kind of, um, or any other kind of, um, like sci-fi mech thing. More often than not, he does like the browns. Even the way that he draws or the color he chooses to draw is usually brown. If not gray, it's going to be brown. Um, kind of like Conte Crayon, right? Um, he likes to explore a bit of that hidden anatomy, the bone structure. Um, and look at the hue or the different value. Well, values? No, not values, but... It's not just one solid, like, brown. There's quite a few colors in it, like, a, quite a few variations. I mean, it's still kind of brownish-yellowish, but you can see this slight vary. You can even see some blues here in the edges, right? So it's not going to be completely brown. I can even see a bit of green here. Although it's very slight or very minimal, but it's there. Um, and again, he likes to use that bristle kind of... Not bristle, but um, a brush that's kind of... It has a bit of that jitter in it. So it kind of jumps around ever so slightly, right? 
Um, it makes his work more kind of artsy. Uh, this one's actually uh, another environment that's not complete, but uh, this could be a Star Wars scene, right? I'm guessing. Because this one looks like Darth Vader. And this guy is kind of being lifted. This could be Tatooine. It feels like it. Um, oh, I skipped one. Oh, this one's more of a, a bunch of head studies. It's pretty good with the heads as well. Um, and he has a pretty solid kind of drawing and painting approach, like a style. So he's not... He is obviously a professional. And I, I actually do want to reach this um, level of competency. And... Um, Jesus Christ, he's so buff. Um, reminds me a bit of Steve Houston, because Steve Houston um, likes to use charcoal in his work. And he likes to kind of blend the edges a bit. Oh, he does the same thing where he'll add like a solid line in the edge. Kind of like Adam Hughes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of makes sense. Oh, look at this back. Fuck. It also hel helps to like have a bunch of good reference photos, so... If you have like a, a site that you kind of keep going back to for studies, you know, just post it in the comments below and, you know, just help the community, right? So here you have more like thumbnail types of sketches. Um, maybe exploring more of the poses because there's not a lot of design here. Maybe a bit of anatomy study here, but they're more gestural, more about the pose, more about the energy of a, in this case, kind of like a warrior, caveman, viking kind of guy. Ooh. Now this one's a bit more rendered, right? Oh shit, sorry about the mic. Um, wow. And they're thumbnails, right? His sketchbook pages look pretty amazing. I'm not sure how big he goes with these pages, but... Uh, um, I'm actually getting inspired now to... Because uh, I've been kind of falling off my path recently. And uh, I need to get back to that. I, I think I just kind of lost, or maybe I, I was burned out or something, but I need to get back. And seeing work like his, seeing the amount of work being put in, the amount of exploration being done, and seeing the joy, you know, seeing the commitment, I think is a great way to kind of remind us to, you know, stay on our path, right? Because sometimes we, you know, we fall and shit. Um, anyway. A bit more rendered here when it comes to, like, the abs. Great arm study. Very solid line. Very strong gestural line to kind of contain that arm and then simple shading, right? Cool hands. Some more thumbnail studies here. Oh, reminds me a bit of, um, Michael Ham Is it Michael Hampton? He has like a, this awesome figure drawing book. Um, I believe his name is Michael Hampton. Um, right? Shit. Anyway. <laughs> so he's kind of breaking down the figure into like basic shapes. Proportions. Hmm. I'm not sure if this was for a class. I'm not sure if he actually does teach, but I think he would be a great teacher. You know? Because he would be great, you know doing demos and shit. Um, so a lot of bird studies here. And I believe he was trying to make a comparison between modern day birds and dinosaurs because I can see like triceratops here. Um, I can see a vulture, an eagle, or no, a falcon. And an owl. Owls, right? Now this is more of an eagle right here. Um, so I, I believe I believe he was trying to study a bit of that structure that makes a bird look like a bird, but kind of also makes a dinosaur look like a dinosaur. So again, look at how awesome these sketches are. Very very gestural, right? Very efficient and very playful. Now these are more painting studies. This could be based off of a photo, perhaps a uh, film screenshot. Uh, or in this case, it does like to use a squarish, still like a squarish brush, but this one, this part right here does, does have a bit of texture in it. Um, now these are more developed studies, more, more, more painted studies. 
Uh, I'm not sure where he gets these. Maybe from old films. Uh, but uh, I love those armpits though. Look at how the edge control is pretty cool here. You can get you can see that sharp kind of cut between that shadow in the armpit and the um, the kind of light part. Um, and even if you can see the strokes, the kind of back and forth strokes, it does add a bit of that, like the spacing, that slight spacing between the kind of shows the white background adds to the texture of it, um, and it does give that very sketchy kind of artsy kind of look. Again, very awesome facial study here. Um, hmm. Okay. Some more figure drawing studies. Um, a bit of shading here. Very, very nice indication of the core shadow. Um, right? I do recommend you follow him on Instagram. Just because the consistency also will kind of help you be more inspired. I was actually watching this video by... This uh, YouTuber, I can't remember his name, but uh, just by being consistent, you're showing it's just more respectable, and it's, it's actually it helps you more than it helps others, just because it shows how much you respect yourself. And I, I've I've been kind of personally falling off that path, and um, you know it happens, but I need to kind of own up to it and get back on track. Um, so he does have like a few more mechanical types of studies and I do feel it doesn't always transfer as well just because he's, he's been fo he's been focusing too much well it's not, it's not like a bad thing but he's focused too much on well not too much I guess it's because he's focused more on um, organic forms that whenever he does like sci-fi it's not always the same like his mechs will look kind of soft which is not too bad but um, I can see his where his expertise is at but obviously this is a study so I I guess he kind of wants to get better at it in some way because he does few or he does not a lot but he does have a few um, sci-fi types of um, artwork so kid studies here um, character development <clears throat> I believe he was doing this for a uh, short film an animated film um, he was I'm not sure I'm, I'm just guessing here because I can't really remember but um, you can still see the kind of conceptualization process where he does like the line sketches first and they're actually kind of gestural right very very explorative 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 uh, they almost feel like doodles to me here you can see the kind of slight um, um, that just kind of showing what makes up this object so he's doing it bit by bit. And I do like seeing sheets like this because they they explain themselves. You know, you, you don't really need to use words, especially if you're an artist, because you can always just draw and explain it through the, the art, right? Um, and do like diagrams. It just makes it more... It's more understandable, you know? Oh yeah, he was doing like a scarecrow kind of concept. Um... So this is the kid with the scarecrow, perhaps meeting some kind of a king, being judged maybe. Um, hopefully YouTube won't ban me. <laughs> well, lots of anatomical kind of studies here, obviously focused on the chest. And look at how he did like the shoulders here, like how it's separated from the, the chest. You can actually see the chest muscles and the clavicles and the, the traps and a bit, a bit of that neck here, right? And to be able to do studies like this, uh, like these, you actually do need to have good reference photos. Um, so I'm not sure where he gets his, but it's just very helpful. Now these are more painted studies. I mean, he'll obviously have to draw them in the beginning. You can still see the kind of solid line work. Even this face is well rendered or well painted. It even has a bit of a few variety. You can see some blues here or some greens. Showing a bit of that under skin or that under flesh, right? Or the veins, perhaps. Um, but look at how rendered it is. Look at how anatomically pleasing it is to the eyes, right? 
And I guess his work leans more towards realism. Oh, this is actually what got me into his work, his Predator fan art. Um, I think he was just trying to uh, uh, make his own take or just explore how he would have envision, envision um, a Predator. And I actually do like his designs. They're very, this one actually looks pretty aggressive. This one looks like it's kind of friendly, kind of experienced. Um, but here for these two guys or this guy, it's um, maybe it's, be it's because of the red in it and the red eyes or the yellow eyes. It just makes it look um, kind of aggressive. He did have to change the mouth here a bit. But it does actually feel like a predator because, if uh, you know, facially they're not very friendly looking kind of character. But it's kind of what makes it awesome. You know, if it's too friendly, it kind of takes away from that kind of badass kind of look, right? And it tops him because um, he actually, I, I guess he likes reptiles, so... You know, this is going to be kind of easy for him, I guess. Um, and because it's a humanoid kind of figure, um, it's going to be even easier. Um, a bit of sci-fi, simple sci-fi design here. Obviously, it's already been developed. He's, he's, just, he's just kind of adding a bit of, you know, predatoriness to it. The gun, the plasma gun. Um, lots of head studies here. Look at how amazing they are. You can see a lot of reds in this one. Very fleshy. Um, now this one does have a bit of an expression in it in the eyes. You can tell. Wow. Even if this thing is not even human, it does have... I mean, look at those eyes. It's kind of looking at you, right? Well, not directly at you, but it's, you know... It's there. Just... Like it's looking at something, kind of to your left, and maybe something is behind you, you know? Ooh. Now this one's more about the helmet design. And the Predators do have very interesting helmet designs, because each of them do have their own. I, I, I think they do personalize their helmets a lot, so it's kind of fun to, you know, add your own kind of um, flair to them. Those gestural lines really do transfer well into the painting. Very very impressionistic as well. Very very playful. Maybe he was trying to explore the pose here a bit but I think he kind of got lost in the helmet design. <laughs> very very nice sense of abdominals here. Oh, those abs. Ripped. Um, uh, he was trying to explore the skeleton, the skeletal structure. <coughs> um, excuse me. Uh, I think he was obviously trying to explore the skeletal structure here. And based on this sketch, I think he based it off of a bird. And then he kind of got that kind of, um, like, uh, that sense of proportion from a bird and transferred it onto a to this predator kind of skeletal um, structure, right? I like this head though, especially this one. It just looks really, really cool. Anyway, sorry about that. If you're hearing some noise in the background, I apologize. Uh, uh, fuck. Some more tank studies. Um, <laughs> yeah, not much to say. Uh, I guess he still likes to use- oh shit, he still likes to use that, you know, that square bristle brush. Um, it does get a bit more impressionistic. Impressionistic in the background. Um, yep. More tanks, boom! Um, I did like the way he uh, did, or you do like the way he did the, the wheels here. How it's kind of cut, and the shadows are pretty dark here, very very solid. Um, Maybe he did use a bit of a custom shape here. Or maybe he just kind of painted something on a new layer and just kind of warped to, to, to kind of um fill in the ground a bit. Yeah. Another tank study. Is this called a tank? When they have wheels? Um, oh, it does get kind of hot here. Very, very interesting. Um, and even his sketches, you can still see that kind of uh, gestural line work. Um, it still shows through... Um, after, you know, doing painting or doing the painting part. Um, 
So they're riding something. It could be some kind of... It looks fat. Um, <laughs> so they're more like cave women. Or not cave women, because you can see a bit of armor here. Um, hmm. Those are boots. Cold environment? Maybe, maybe they are kind of like... Tribal, at the very least. So this is more of an environment study, seeing it from above. Well, I do see a few flat brushes here. Um, in the directional mode, you can tell. By the way, whenever you kind of shift the brush, or quickly shift or turn the brush, you can see the kind of break in the uh, the brush spacing. And uh, yeah. It's actually kind of hard doing more hard edges uh, when painting or drawing. Well, especially painting, because you have to be more careful when defining the edge because when you're doing like soft organic stuff you can kind of be a bit more wavy i guess <laughs> or more fluid with your brush strokes um another study of uh a pole jumping no not sure triceratops again that square bristle brush along with that jittery kind of bristle brush right he still likes to show off that initial kind of gestural line work especially in the contour surrounding the entire um sketch right more of a painted study here sorry about the mic fuck my hat is kind of hitting the the mic and uh yeah oh look at the shadow though even in the shadow, he likes to add that kind of um, solid line in the edge. Another beach study, perhaps. Um, and look at how realistic it is. He's not very style. He, he does have like a style. He will draw faces and bodies a certain way. And you can tell by the proportions and stuff like that. But he does lean more towards a more realistic kind of look. Um, he likes to render it out. Or not render. I, I guess render it more, you know. He likes to show off the anatomy, I guess. Um, I like how he did the fat here of the butt, where it actually feels like sh she is kind of sitting down and on the ground. Uh, it really helps add more to that sense of realism, right? Nice sense of perspective here, like the hand is kind of going further away, right? Um, studies of two babes. And this one's more of a warrior study. Oh, it's kind of like a uh, a centaur. Oh, it's a centaur hunter. Huh. Okay. Not bad. The guy is bulky. And because he's bulky, the horse part of him is going to be bulky as well. And look at that bird. He had to paint the bird too. Fuck. It's kind of like a, a mix between an eagle and a vulture. Or maybe it is a vulture. Um, Because it's more vulture than eagle. Uh, I do like the design though. And again, very natural looking colors. So, facial explorations here. Now, this one's kind of more sci fi, I think. And, um, oh yeah, I think it was exploring the logo, the design for these flags here. Um, and you can, I think it is kind of sci fi ish in nature. I can see a rake brush, a few more flat brushes. Um, not a lot of brush variety again. Um, he likes to show his painting through the the strokes. So just kind of overstroke it. Um, kind of like a pencil. Again. So sketch. Painted sketch. Oh! Pretty. Um, very, very soft looking feminine woman. These are more orc women. I believe very, very aggressive looking women but still very alluring <laughs> um ah! so this guy's obviously shocked seeing my face um so this is more of an alien he doesn't do like a lot of aliens but uh you know but again even if he does an alien he'll have to go back to that humanoid form in one way or another right i love the scratches here it just adds a bit more variety. Oh, it does have a bit more of that variety, that, that brush variety, right? Maybe it's because he wants to show a type of skin. I do think so. 
Um, so these are more like elves, I believe, just because of the ears. Um, okay, very, very interesting design. Um, she's wearing a bunch of thumbs or fingers. Uh, weird flex, but okay. Oh, she has a hand on her fucking head. High five. More dinosaur, dragon-like thing. Now, the colors here, the colors here are a bit too much for me. But, um, maybe it's for a reason, right? I like how we kind of just suggested the ornamentation or the, what's the word, the, um, the embroidery in this kind of golden part of the cape. Or fabric, right? Rhino guy, pretty fat. Um, buff. Oh, look at that bicep though. There's a bit of fat because it's kind of squishing onto the chest. But uh, again, even if you do like weird creature designs, you will inevitably have to use or reuse the human form in it. He did have to change the foot though, and obviously a bit of that proportion. Right? The human proportion. Um. So here we have another lizard. Um, kind of big with the butt. Um, not exactly a girl because of the chest, right? Or maybe, you know, flat chest is kind of a thing. I mean, I like flat chests. Respect. Um, it's kind of a weird precision though. Like she's kind of riding something. <laughs> or he. No judgment. Um. Okay, this one's pretty cool. It's more of a sci-fi kind of concept. Um, it's a mix of a creature design and a mech concept. It's mostly a creature thing, but it does have like a, bio a bionic kind of look to it. And look at how not it's not super rendered. It's a bit... It's not finished in any way, but it looks cool. Like the concept is there, you know? If ever someone needs to or someone wants it to be more refined, they can always find someone else to kind of bring something like this further right but when it comes to like ideas concepts this kind of painting is good enough you know and right now it actually helps me or it does i i'm pulled in right i'm actually interested in seeing this thing more right it doesn't have to be fully rendered to be interesting so more explorations about this creature thing um exploring the mechanical parts of it uh it feels very crab-like to me. So these are more mechs. Or they are mechs, actually. Not creatures at all. I do like the way he added the rust thing here. Right? How it gets browner in some parts. Um, and look at how he didn't have to like paint this. It's mostly a silhouette with a bit of suggest uh, suggestion of some parts. But... Uh, you know, when you do like mechs and shit, you don't really have to think about the mechanics of it too much. Um, you just need to know enough to kind of to kind of make it look like it works, you know? Um, again, I'm not a pro, but uh, damn. Some design, or not design, but color variations. Another character creature concept here. Um, Masaka, Hunter. Ooh, very, very aggressive looking thing. Right? It reminds me of the face of the Kraken in the Attack of the Titans, or Wrath. No, no, not Attack of the Titans, a Wrath, sorry, of the Titans. Um, I'm actually interested in watching the anime, the Attack of the, Attack of the Titans anime, but there are like so many seasons and it's kind of turning me off, or not turning me off, but I'm kind of pressured to not watch it because... I feel like I'm getting too invested, you know? If there are like too many seasons, like, it's going to take so much of my time. Because if you like start with one season, you won't be able to stop for the most part. So. And I am trying to get back on my art thing. Oh, and just painting again, drawing again. I'm um, getting more consistent, so I need to tone down the amount of anime that I actually uh, watch and consume. Um, or at least save it for the later part of the day. Ah, that's so cool. I like the forms of it. 
it's a mix of everything, but it looks like it lives underwater. So that's what matters to me. Some more uh, explorative sketches. Oh, I think he uh, started with this line sketch and then he developed it, colored it even more. Um, wow. Very gestural, kind of like, oh shit, kind of like a, a comic artist. Shit, what's his name? Um, let me just go to my channel. Um, he's a comic book artist. Um, he has a name. Oh, Greg Tuccini. He also has very gestural um, line work or sketches. Like it feels very not straight, very, very playful. And it does transfer to his more colored work. And the same goes for um, Vlad Ganelli here. Um, yeah. So the Nyanja Masaka Hunter. Some more explorative sketches here. Head studies of some kind of creature. Some more underwater um, entities, right? It has a bit of that Craig, uh, not Craig Mullins, um, Ian McKegg. I don't know, like the way Ian McKegg kind of sketches, it kind of shows off, or I can kind of see it a bit here. Um, yeah. So a boxing study. Um, So these are heavier head studies and uh, you can still see the kind of solid um, line at the edge um, but obviously it's it's becoming more of a painting than an actual um, sketch just because it's kind of like, again in these two right here you can hardly see the line work anymore um, so I love the way he does the hair right I always have trouble painting the hair um, just because there are like so many strands and you kind of have to know how to chunk it. Oh, even the way you can tell in this painting alone or this study, it does feel like a pastel chalk kind of thing, right? Awesome. Uh, warrior study here or design. Oh, I love this predator. Damn. Maybe this is some kind of chieftain or king, some kind of leader. Looks mean as hell. Um, and I like seeing that in his work. Like, there's actually a bit of emotion. Maybe it's because he's, he's been doing a lot of, like, human um, studies that it kind of transfers to, again, everything. Especially in his creature designs. Um, where they actually do have, like, a face. Look at how, look at how gestural that line work is. And couple that with his very, with his very um, kind of direct drawing kind of painting approach, where it's a bit like dashy or stroke by stroke. I don't really know the word or the right kind of way to explain it, but it's there, you know. Some more explorations, um, environment studies, I believe. And I've I've only seen like a short like clip of the interviews, and he did mention shapes. So I think that's one of his core. I mean, you can see it whenever he does studies like these, where he simplifies the whole thing when it comes in terms of like shape, um, or into shapes. For example, this base right here, you can tell it's kind of broken down in the background a bit, and then that shape is broken into like smaller shapes, and you can see it kind of applied in this kind of figure study as well. Um, and it shows you that you don't need to know like the whole 3D thing. I mean, obviously, it's you need to kind of understand how it works in the 3D space or how things work in a 3D kind of environment. But um, I always go back to Adam Hughes because even though his work looks pretty refined, whenever you see his sketches, they're very heavy on the shapes. Um, studies of a babe in different poses. Um, Wonderful legs here. Um, very, very interesting legs. Croc study. <sighs> Again, whenever you're doing studies, you don't have to finish it. You know, you just have to do enough to kind of... I guess it helps to actually be clear with what exactly you want to study in the first place. So you 
so you can actually stop, you know. Because if you don't have like a defined goal, you, you'll just kind of keep going and going. Um, it doesn't even have to be like um. Maybe you can also use um like a like a deadline, I guess, as a goal. If you're not very specific with like a subject, you can just like say spend an hour just kind of in your sketchbook, just practicing, exploring, right? Shark study. It's very very heavily painted here. Um, so different studies of different dudes. They're kind of old. Um, more figure drawing studies. A bit of head studies. And oh, I do see a bit of. I believe his name is Michael Hampton. Um, uh, oh, nice foot here. It's a very interesting perspective, right? Because there's obviously like a lot of foreshortening, so you actually have to figure out how the, the arc of the foot goes and how the ankle kind of goes with it. So, you know, it's kind of interesting. Mongolian? Is this like a Mongolian thing, I'm guessing? Um, or not? Hard to say. Obviously a warrior chick of some kind. Fairy. He actually has like a lot of, uh, if you go to his art station, each post has like a bunch of images. So I'm just kind of running down through them, just because there's so many. So more figure drawing studies here, a bit of rendering with this guy. But you can see the amount of work that he does and it shows in his studies, it shows in his actual concepts. Um, goals, um, I'm trying to be this buff. <laughs> ah, fuck. Very, very awesome musculature here. Musculature? Fuck. Um. Head study, again. Environment study? I'm not sure if this is a plain air painting, but yeah. Oh, shit, I hit the mic again. Sorry. Maybe he was in a beach, I'm guessing. Because these look like average people in a beach. Um. Another reptilian dinosaur study. Environment study seeing from seeing it from above again. Um a night study. That's a weird hat though. Some more environment sketches here. Um I do like seeing how in his environments how it kind of chat like it feels like they fit for example you can see a bit of browns here in the actual um architecture like it's actually part of the environment like it's it ages it ages with the environment you know because sometimes when i see paintings they're kind of out of place sometimes where the architecture is kind of off even though it's in the environment it feels like it's brand new you know so i think it helps to kind of um make your work a bit more consistent looking right Oh, I think he did use the blur filter here. Very, very impressionistic. Lots of flat brush use. I'm not sure if this chick was bowling. Because I'm not exactly sure what she was trying to grab here. Um, but yeah. Lots of arm studies. Oh, I love that knee though. Oh, you can see a bit of greens here. Maybe it's coming from the, the shirt. Hard to say. More head studies of a statue. Hmm. In grayscale. Very, very pencil like in nature. Ah, uh, this is a great example of his how it's it's more of a gesture drawing, but it does show a bit of anatomical um, information, especially through the contours, the edges here. Very, very solid line work. Coupled with a basic kind of shading. Just to kind of set it apart from the background. But it's not very rendered in any way. It's mostly about the uh, the gestural um, lines. But it looks very, very organic, right? Nice quick study of an environment. It actually feels like it could be a cover for a brush pack. <laughs> and... Uh, cowboy. Yeehaw! Oh, this one feels like a... Um, alien? 
it's obviously very predatory in nature. Um, oh shit, she, she doesn't have arms. Oh, very, very weird looking heels here. I'm not sure if this is kind of a personal project of his, but look at how realistic these women are. I believe they are of the same character, right? Um, that's a weird looking kind of heel. I love the anatomy though, like how it looks realistic. It's not very, it's hardly stylized. I mean, you can tell a bit of like, he pushes the anatomy just a bit, but I guess because he's been drawing and studying so much of human figures that he pretty much has a good grasp of how to make it look real, even the way the butt is displayed here. Christ. Um. This one does have a bit of fashion in it. Um, even this one. Uh, some more butt studies, more leg studies, back studies. Um, fuck. Ugh. Oh, these are great. More feet. Um. <clears throat> oh, I do like the way he was able to show the softness of the soles, right? Because, um... Even when, well, in this case, he's actually kind of painting the feet. He's not drawing it, but whenever I draw feet, like, it's hard to uh, illustrate the softness of it. Kind of like uh, whenever drawing, when, whenever you're kind of drawing the palms of the, the hand, it's kind of hard to show that softness. Because often, more often than not, whenever I draw hands, it kind of looks hard, you know? Like, how do you make it look soft, you know? I mean, obviously, it becomes hard whenever you reach the, the ankles or, or the knuckles of the hand, right? So it's kind of very interesting to see how he can soften things up, right? Anyway. Nice shoulder here. Ooh, buff. Alien. Very, very sad looking eyes. Oh. Oh, this one definitely does feel more like a Ian McKegg. Because whenever Ian McKegg does shade, he likes to use very short, dashy kind of strokes. Not very long strokes like... Um, well, Vlad, but he likes to kind of go for a more squiggly kind of approach. Ian McKegg, by the way. Um, very, very interesting study of the legs, the feet, the knees look amazing. Ugh. Nice pose, this chick. Very, very inviting, I would say. Um, I do have like a few more, but the tabs of my browser are kind of done and filled up, so I do recommend you follow Vlad in his art station, especially. In his Instagram, he does have, or he does post more consistently in on Instagram, so. I will also be linking the three interviews I found of this guy. And uh, there they are in English, so no worries. Um, I do hope you enjoyed this video, this art review of Vlad Ganelli. Um, and yeah, keep drawing. Wait, just, just an additional <laughs> kind of uh, advice, I guess, or reminder. Um, because in his work, he does show a lot of his kind of behind the scenes, I would say. In the, the studies, the, the sketchbook kind of stuff. And um, if ever you're kind of falling apart... <laughs> well, not falling apart, but whenever you're kind of... Whenever you've lost, like, the drive or the passion, um, it's okay, it happens once in a while, but it's important to kind of get back on your feet and just start... You have to remind yourself of why you started in the first place. And I guess for me, I kind of lost love. And um, I kind of forgot what a commitment means or what a relationship is supposed to be. And we do have, as artists, we do have a relationship with art, right? And we need to remind ourselves that we are in a commitment. Assuming you've decided that this thing is going to be your thing, there will be days where it's kind of rough and you're not really feeling it, but it doesn't mean you should quit, you know, and start kind of procrastinating. Um, Regardless of your feeling or your kind of motivation or passion, a commitment is a commitment. And I was, I saw this, um, shit. I had to drink some water. Um, I saw this comment somewhere. Um, this guy was kind of explaining how, what love means. And love is about choice, he said. How you're kind of choosing to be with that activity, with that thing, with that person. Um, despite whatever <laughs> right and I, I don't fully grasp what that means but i kind of see what a how 
love is kind of a commitment, you know? So, if you're kind of losing love when it comes to your art, um, just remind yourself, be committed, and just show up, be consistent, be like Vlad Ganelli, and hopefully he inspires you to uh, kind of get back on track. Because um, I know he did inspire me, um, or he continues to inspire me, just like the artists that I see, or th that I personally include in my art review series. Um, so keep drawing, keep painting, and stay free.